I'm very excited with the message Bishop is going to bring. He has been a harvester, a plower of this field in Shelby for many, many years. And it was true, uh, 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 Sister Gloria and Brother Gary, the first meeting that we had, it was a very divine connection and the friendship blossom. And we want to uh, thank the Lord for that. Let's put our hands and welcome Bishop Randy Bodis as he speaks the word of God. When I tell you um, just to have somebody like a pastor in the city, we've been praying for years for the Lord to send us a real apostolic gift. Uh, he came here and people are here from four different nations that have moved here in the last three years. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how he's plowed up this ground. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse number 21 says that your days may be multiplied and that the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give thee as as the days of heaven upon the earth in the land. I'm just going to accent several clauses in the land as the days of heaven upon earth. There is something I, I don't know what I'm going to title the, the message tonight. So just do it. Um, but there is something um, called heaven and earth agreement. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created them to function together. And so it was always about heaven and earth functioning together. And whenever Jesus comes on earth, he starts saying something like, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So uh, it is about this whole agreement. And then when he created Adam and Eve, he tells them to have dominion in the earth. So God created Adam and Eve to live in a world that responded to voice. I'm going to say that again. To live in a world that responded to voice. He didn't create them to live in a world that responded to muscular strength or that would respond uh, to, um, to speed or to intellect, but the world was to respond to voice. It was voice activated. So Jesus shows them how that world was when he comes on the scene and he starts speaking to trees and tell them to wither and they wither. He tells the wind to stop and the wind stop. He tells, uh, he tells us, say, mountain be removed and, and be uh, going in the yonder place. In other words, you start saying it's activated. So heaven, everybody say this, heaven is voice activated. Heaven is not only voice activated, but heaven is an active place, which means that, th that even though you're sitting around now and, and we're sitting here, we are actually seated in heavenly places. But heaven is an active place. So if earth is like heaven, it is a place to where there is dimensional direction. So in heaven, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So if there's a whole lot of stuff going on in heaven, he's saying just as there's movement in heaven, I want there to be movement in the earth. So... You're occupying a seat in the natural, but you're also seated with him in heavenly places. So there are things that are happening in heaven at all times, and heaven is not stagnant. It is not stationary. So therefore, we should not be stagnant, and we should not be stationary. And so Pastor Francis got up and started talking about their angels with us tonight. And so if you believe in angels, then you have to understand the angels are so good that they protect us in ways that we don't even know. And there's a whole lot of stuff we don't get into because the angels were active. That's how we know that they were on their job. And so our job now, I'm on my way somewhere. It's like a, it's a slow moving train, but I got to preach around the bush to get to it. <clears throat> but I'll make my point. So he says that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if heaven is an active place, it means it's possible to move things from one realm to another. So if, so if things are in heaven, they have to be able to be moved uh, to another world, which means it is possible for things that are immaterial to become material. So there is a transfer and a transaction that moves heaven to earth. So Jacob falls asleep. We were talking in the office. J Jacob, uh, okay, Jacob falls asleep and takes my microphone. But Jacob falls asleep. <laughs> And he has this dream, and in his dream he sees this ladder, and the ladder is touching heaven, and then the bottom of it is touching earth. And so he sees these angels that are ascending and descending, and he calls the place. He said, this place is the gate of heaven, which means, the, everybody say gate of heaven. Yeah. So mean that, that means that there are places where heaven actually, uh, uh, actually has an access point in the earth. So he calls this the gate of heaven. I believe that Jesus my king is the gate of heaven. Amen. I believe that the reason that the Lord sends people to this place, because this is a place to where, uh, where manifestation takes place. Amen. This is a place where miracles take place. This is a place of signs and wonders. This is a place where people can come and know they can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is a place to where the gifts of the Spirit have free reign. It is, it is a gate of heaven. So the thing that separated the heaven from the earth is something called atmosphere. Somebody say atmosphere. Atmosphere. 
So it's the atmosphere that becomes the source of inspiration. If you're inspired, you're usually inspired by an atmosphere. Music, we heard uh, the musicians play tonight. Music comes from inspiration, and inspiration comes from atmosphere. And wherever the atmosphere or whatever atmosphere you're in determines your inspiration. Art comes from inspiration. So, uh, so, so once music, even though it may be in your head and you start playing, but once it is written down, then that music can be given and somebody else can reproduce it in another place and create the same atmosphere that you, that you were in that that music came out of. So <clears throat> different people are paid different amounts even though they're playing the same music because to the atmosphere you add who you are. So there is a, 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 a dimension that you impose on the atmosphere. That's why you have to watch people while people praise God because uh, praise comes up out of an atmosphere. And so you have to bring something to the atmosphere. Praise is demonstrative. You have to say something. You have to do something. You have to move because you're moving an atmosphere. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way somewhere. Trust me. I'm just traveling. But you're moving an atmosphere. So in Genesis chapter 1, there were waters above, waters uh, beneath. There was heaven between, and on the second day, God created the firmament. This is something we call atmosphere. So the thing that separates you from what you want is really atmosphere. Okay, I'm on my way. So when something comes up out of atmosphere, the atmosphere causes us to reproduce the atmosphere that the thing came out of. So if you write a song, it's a sad song that came out of your depression, and you sing the sad song again, it has the ability to make people depressed. If you write a song when you're happy, and the song came up out of a happy place, you have the ability then to make people happy again. So whatever atmosphere the inspiration comes out of, if it is rehearsed, especially if it's celebrated, will be recreated. We're recreating atmosphere. There is a reason that we're gathering on the last uh, Wednesday of every month. And the reason that it has become habitual is because there is an atmosphere that God is after to be created in the city. And it cannot be something that we do hit or miss every now and then, but it's something that has become consistent. He put it in the heart of the apostle because he realized it takes consistency to create an atmosphere in a region. And so the point then is to create the atmosphere so that transactions can take place between heaven and earth. So it's interesting that the enemy is referred to as the prince of the power of the air. So he positions himself between heaven and earth, trying to impose himself upon the atmosphere so that what you're believing God for, you will not be able to have because the atmosphere is corrupt. So then God raises up a people and say, seize the atmosphere because whoever controls the atmosphere controls the stuff and whoever controls the stuff moves the city and we can't move the city because we don't have the stuff and we don't have the stuff because we don't control the atmosphere. So, so what God does, he raises up this people. And so the people have to understand that we have a responsibility to control the atmosphere. Tell your neighbor, I am an atmosphere. What is that? Where's that term? Wait a minute. Is uh, 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 what, what, what is it like an atmosphere control agent? Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm an air traffic controller. That's who I, I determine what comes in and I determine what goes out. I determine, I have declared that everywhere over my head is a no-fly zone. I have declared that this church is Goshen, and it might be dark over there, but it will not be dark for us. I don't care if they call in recession. We're not going to bow down to recession because our God supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He said, David said, I've been young, but now I'm old, but I've never seen one thing. One thing I've never seen. I have never seen the righteous forsake nor the seed of God begging for bread. You won't be begging in this season. So whoever controls the atmosphere controls the gates. King James Version says uh, uh, they, they talk about these portals, gates. He talks about the windows of heaven, Matthew, Malachi 3.10. He said, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me not here with, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. So he talks about windows of heaven. He talks about doors. 
Pastor Chalk in 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, he talks about there's a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. We, we talked about the scripture that talks about ladders and he talks about gates in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. He says, and also, uh, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In Genesis 22, 17, he says, the seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. In Genesis 28, 17, he says, and he was afraid and said, how dreadful is the place. This is none other but the house of God. It is the gate of heaven. So whoever controls the atmosphere controls the gates. Perhaps we have not been intentional enough about controlling or seizing the atmosphere of Shelby, North Carolina to decide that this is the holy city. This is the, this is the place where God abounds and everything that God does not want, we will disallow. In other words, we veto every edict that the enemy has decreed and declared over us, and we say, there is a new sheriff in town. We are saying, listen, if, we, if whatever we bind is going to be bound, and whatever we lose is going to be loose, so there is an activity that we have and a responsibility that we have to atmosphere. So there's a man by the name of Elijah, and he's having this battle <clears throat> with the prophets of Baal. And in this battle with the prophets of Baal, the scripture says, he calls down fire from heaven. Uh, uh, Pastor Francis, he doesn't start a fire. He doesn't make a fire. He doesn't build a fire. The scripture says he called for it, which means if he called for it, it means that, that somewhere it existed. In the realm somewhere, a fire was burning, and he called for a fire that was already there. So he had to know that there was something out there that he could call. So this other realm, there is an unseen realm that has what we need. So he, he saw it. So that means it had to come through a portal. It had to come through a window. It had to come through a door. Or it had to come through a gate. Luke chapter number nine, verse number 54. We're going to get to this prayer tonight in just a second. Luke chapter nine and verse 54. It says, when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire come down? Uh, from heaven and consumed them, even as Elias did, the fact that they would even question means that they knew that it existed somewhere. They didn't ask, and they would not have asked, uh, you know, they didn't ask, do you want us to fight? They said, do you want us to call it fire? Because there's fire right there somewhere. I believe that God wants to reveal to us some things that we don't even know exist. And then he wants to give us the responsibility to act in faith and believe that we could call those things that be not as though they were. That we could call things, in other words, we could call forth justice in our city. That we can call forth equality in our city. That we can call forth unity in our city. That, that we will not sit on our side of the fence and watch you on your side of the fence. But Friday night, we'll slip right on over to the Hispanic church and say we are one church. I can't, I don't know what you're saying in your song, but I know when you call the name of Jesus, I'm going to clap my hands with you. That's what we do. And so Revelations chapter 21 and verse number 2. And I, John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down. Everybody say down. down. Coming down from God out of heaven. Coming down out of, down out of, down out of heaven. <clears throat> Prepare as a bride adorned for husband. In this particular passage, the word down out of, the term is used four times. So any time you use down, it's like up, it's directional. But any time you say out of, it's dimensional. So he's saying, he said, I, I, I want this, to, it's going to come down, but it's going to come out of, which means there is another dimension. It's a dimension called heaven. I believe that we're about to experience some divine things. That's why the fight has been so intense. That's why every time, I'm telling you, and I don't care what position you have with Roe versus Way. when you saw that, that history was upset in the moment, it means that we are, in the, we are in the midst of incredible upsets, and we will see upsets one right after another. I'm telling you, history was shifted in a moment, and I'm telling you, it was a sign to the church that history is about to be shifted one thing after another. We will be world changes, and this is the time, this is the moment, so you got to tell the atmosphere what you want. You, there's a, uh, there's a, a colloquial expression that we have, Pastor Stephen said, closed, closed mouths don't get fed. In other words, you're going to have to speak what you want. You know, you have to say, Mama, I want to eat in order for her to feed you. You've got to speak what you want in order for that thing to come to pass. 
Maybe we're not experiencing what we need to experience because we're afraid. We're too timid. We're too shy. We don't want to. We don't want to tell cancer to back up because we're afraid. Well, what if they die? Well, what if they get healed? We're 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 afraid to say. Listen, that we, we are prosperous and we are very prosperous. That we will live in wealth. That we're, He's brought us out into a wealthy place. That we're not beggars and we're not paupers. We're a king's kid, and God's taking care of us. And God has given us the wealth of the land so that we could do His biddings and take care of the kingdom of God. So that we could employ people. Yes, so that we could buy houses. And I believe still that we'll live in houses that we didn't build, have vineyards that we didn't plant. That God wants to give us that kind. of of favor. The scripture says he surpasses us or surrounds us with favor as a shield. You're going to walk into so much favor that things that you thought you were going to have to buy are going to be given to you. You're going to walk in so much favor that the people that you desire to bless, God's going to put the resources in your hand to bless him. He put the desire in your heart. If he put the desire in your heart, he'll put the resources in your hand. So, down out of. So when Jesus said, go catch fish, He's saying this, where did it come from? It came out of. So the children of Israel in the wilderness and every morning they wake up and they would have manna. Uh, Anybody in around around breaking bread? What it came out of. It came out of a realm. They just woke up and it just showed up. I'm telling you that we're walking in a position right now that we're getting ready to see things come up and out of just manifesting. Nobody baked bread last night, but I got bread every day. Then there is another passage, the scripture says, that in that particular passage, uh, he says that I want you to dig ditches. Dig ditches. He said there shall be no rain. There'll no water come down. But the valley shall be filled with water. There was no ditches. Where did the water came from? It came out of. It didn't come down, so it had to be manifested. There are some things, and the reason that that happened, the, the, the Moab, Moabites were on the outside of the desert waiting for the children of Israel to be refreshed by rain. And so they never saw them be refreshed by rain, so they thought they were going to die. So God says, if I had sent the rain, they would have known what was happening. So I didn't send it because it would have been a sign to them. So instead of sending it down, I bought it up. What I'm trying to tell you is the way God delivers us in this season will be like nothing we've ever seen before. The way God brings it is the enemy is not going to be able to trace your miracle. He's not going to be able to track your blessing. When he turns around, you would have already possessed it. That's why we're praying like we're praying. Because there's some stuff that I should have had years ago that is going to be manifested in 2022. Somebody shot with me. I want my stuff. Woo! Well, it's a good place to shout. Just open your mouth and shout. Hurry up, son. I'm about to finish this thing. So, because there are things that belong to me, things that I should have had, then I, I don't want to walk around afraid to ask. You know what? I'm going to put a demand on the atmosphere. Where there is a demand, there will be a supply. There was a woman who had an issue of blood. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and when she touched the garment, immediately the fountain of her blood dried up. When she touched him, something happened. She put a demand on You don't have to pray for me. You don't have to counsel me. You don't have to lay hands on me. If I touch you, I'll get what I need. There is something about the presence of God that is showing up every last Wednesday of the month where you might not have the prayer art Articulated, but it's going to be in the presence. Woo! Glory to God. Listen, I'm, I, I got to end this because they told me when I need to stop. So, <laughs> Woo! I'm trying to tell you that whoever controls the atmosphere controls the gates. We are getting ready to become the gatekeepers of Shelby. Everybody might not take the assignment. That's why when people become gatekeepers, whenever the enemy hits them, the hit is big. He tries to stop them. He tries to block them. He tries to annihilate. That's why we've got to have intercessors. That's why these pastors need intercessors. you got to pray because you have no idea what the hit is because the enemy is trying to not only keep us from this community, he's trying to keep us from the nation because if God raises us up, everything that's attached to us is going up. 
Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to be finished. Hit it one time so I can catch my breath. But anyway, so what happens is this, is that God then attaches you to a leader and then he says, if you don't break your covenant with that leader, as I raise that leader up, everything that about him goes up, everything about you goes up too. So you can't be jealous of how God is using him, can't be jealous of how God is using him to speak. <clears throat> he has a different grace on him. The graces on this man, I don't have. You know, he see through walls. Like, I tell everybody all the time, they say, what do you think about Pastor Stephen? He can see. <laughs> now, there's some people that can see. Every seer is not a sayer. Some people see things is just so they can pray. But other people see things so that they can articulate it because once it's articulated, then we get the angels to, uh, involved. Once we articulate it, we set the battle in array. Once it is articulated, the atmosphere cannot tolerate a vacuum. When you put it in the atmosphere, things have got to happen. And so God then shows it to the prophet. And so this same passage where there is water that shows up, the Bible says that, uh, he said, bring me a minstrel that I might prophesy. So when he calls for the minstrel, he makes a swelling sound. That's all you got, minstrel? I need just a little bit more. Okay, so he says, call for the minstrel. I can't prophesy that. But anyway, <laughs> fuss at the minstrel. But he says, call for the minstrel that I can prophesy. And then the, the scripture says that, that the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord moved, and the prophet spoke. It's a, it's, it, it was it was an order. The minstrel played. Call for the minstrel. He plays. The prophet speaks, and uh, the hand moves, and the prophet speaks, which means before the prophet speaks, the, the hand of the Lord has already moved. He is only articulating what God has already done. So if the prophet says it, by the time the prophet says it, it has already been worked out in the realm of the eternal because God doesn't work in time like he, we work in time. So God declares the end from the beginning. So there's some things, if he says, listen, I feel like God is blessing marriages this month. By the time the prophet said it, the hand of the Lord has already been moving in marriages. So when he says it, it's an indication that it's happening right now. Tonight, as we get ready to pray, we are praying for how many churches? 140 churches in Cleveland County. 140 churches in Cleveland County are in line for revival. We need revival. We need God to wake us up. We need God to unify us. We need God to bring us back together. We need God to wake up the shepherds. So, my last scripture is Ezekiel chapter 28, verse number 18. And he says this when Lucifer fell. He said, Thou hast defiled, defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore I will bring forth a fire in the midst of thee, and thou sh it shall devour thee, and I will bring, th bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of them that behold thee. So Lucifer, everybody say he's a trafficker. He says, by the iniquity of your traffic. It's interesting, when there are evil enterprises, they call them traffickers, like drug traffickers, human Traffickers. So let's look at what Lucifer was in charge of because I'm trying to show you that the devil's got to lose your stuff. He was the anointed cherub that covered. So we understand that he understands the atmosphere of heaven because he was in charge of worship. He was the archangel in charge of worship. Scholars believe that he was actually made of music. And so he himself was an instrument. So he understands the power of atmosphere. So he's a trafficker, so he knows that, that to get stuff from one realm to another, it's all about worship, to get stuff from one realm to another, he knows how to get out of the spirit into the natural. So, you know, that's how the serpent got in the garden, because he found portals, ladders, gates. It's always about entrances. Revelation 12 says he is the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren is cast down. Well, if he's cast down to the earth, how is he accusing people before God? Because he's always looking for a gate. He's always looking for a portal. He's always looking for a door. And guess what? He keeps showing up in atmosphere as a trafficker. That's why every evil enterprise is heavily funded because of this trafficking that's going on. So here it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm drawing to a close because tonight we're going to shut some doors and we're going to open some others. 
Whoever controls the stuff controls the city. And anytime the kingdom of darkness needs anything, Lucifer knows where the gates are, where the portals are. I want to tell you that we have to decide that this is the gate of heaven. And whatever we desire, God will give it to us. Listen, the things that you believe when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Woo. So I conclude with this. We're always concerned about devils and demons. And I want you to stop being so concerned about devils and demons. When Lucifer fell, only a third of the heavens, a third of the angels fell with him. That means that for every one demon that comes against you, there are two angels working for you. <laughs> for every one spirit that comes against you, two angels are working for you. That was why the prophet said, there are more with us. Lord, open his eyes. There are more with us than there are against us. There is more happening good in Shelby than bad in Shelby. And God had to send a man all the way from Singapore yeah. to come here and remind us this the just shall live by faith. We don't live by this world system. God has got us. And so if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand, two could put ten, three can put ten thousand to flight. So if God is on our side, who would want to be against us? Who could be against us? Who could be against us? So tonight, we plead the blood of Jesus. It is already speaking in the heavenly realm that the accuser of the brethren is cast down. And that's why whenever you praise God, it's not about you making noise. It's about me imposing myself on the atmosphere. And as I impose myself on the atmosphere, I am saying, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. The more I praise God, I say, God, stand up and take your place. You are El Shaddai. Stand up and take your place. You are Jehovah Jireh. There is no need among us because you supply every one of them. Lord, take your place. You are Jehovah Gabor. You're the Lord of the host of the armies of Israel. I wish I had a praiser in this room who would just praise God for what is going to happen about to take place. Whoever controls the atmosphere controls the gates. I believe that the people of God are going to control this atmosphere. There is no weapon that is formed against us that shall be able to prosper. So now don't talk to me. Shoot your praise to him. For 30 seconds, nothing but praise. Nothing but praise. For 30 seconds, adoration. We adore you, oh God. You up. Yes. The devil won't control anything around here. The saints are rising. The apostle is arising. He is like the marshal who gives us direction, who sets the battle in array. We are ready to fight, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You may have been heavy about what's been going on in your family, but tonight is going to break. God, I praise you in advance for what you're doing. God, I praise you in advance for what you're doing. I praise you in advance for opening my eyes. Yes, It will cost us. Get out of yourself. Listen, this is my last command that I got to receive. The men of God in this house. But tonight I'm going to ask you to get what you never have. You got to do what you've never done. 
some of us are used to a particular praise. If you're used to clapping, maybe jump. If you're used to jumping, maybe spin. If you're used to being inside, speak out. But I want you to just to do something that's abnormal. Break the routine of praise. But praise demands something of you. It is not a spectator sport. I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I need everybody to give God an offering of praise. Let the clappers clap, the wavers wave, the spinners spin. But everybody give your God. Give me the room, 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 give me the room. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, 
of the Holy Ghost. Receive. Receive the instructions of the Apostle. There's a river in this place. There's a river in this place. There's a river in this place. Receive the apostle. 